Daz community. This is Not From This World, and I want to welcome you to my tutorial series. I try and help you out with Daz Studio as much as possible and get your comments, suggestions, and ideas. So today I'm kind of excited because I am going to be talking about this add-on that Daz Studio has called Face Transfer. Now there are two types of Face Transfer. There is this add-on called Face Transfer Unlimited, which is for the Genesis 8 figure. And this is actually the one I bought, and this will be the one that I will be showing you today. I chose this one because I don't use Genesis 9 all that much. So I thought, hey, let's do Genesis 8. I don't think they're much different. This right here is the Face Transfer 2. This is for Genesis 9 figures. They're both on sale. I mean, look at this. They are half off right now. And that's really why I decided to just go ahead and take one for the team and buy it. So I got this... Um, Genesis 8 face transfer. And so we're going to be working a little bit with this today. Now I've heard a lot of things about this, how terrible it is, how it doesn't work very well, how the characters don't look like the picture. And I have to say that after playing around with this for a little while, there is some truth to that. But you also have to think about reality. And the reality of this is you're going to have to manipulate your changed character to get it to look more and more like the face that you want it to. So this is not kind of a one and done scenario where you're just going to use face transfer and get a perfect image. The problem with this is face transfer only uses a front view of the character that you want to create. So there are some limitations to this because we don't have a side view. It would be great if Daz developed both a front and a side view for the person you're trying to create because you'd be getting a more accurate portrait. But we're going to play with this. And the first thing we're going to do, just because this is what I always do, is we're going to try and duplicate Milica, which is kind of funny because Milica is a character. And you're wondering, why would you try and just duplicate a character that you already have? We're just going to test this out, OK? So in the comments, don't give me a hard time about like, well, why would you do that? We're just trying to test this. So what I have here is I just for comparison, have Milica set up next to just a Genesis 8 base character. So what we're going to do is we're going to transfer Milica's portrait onto this Genesis 8 base figure. All right. Now, once you purchase the face transfer, you can find it in the window under panes, and then you'll just drop down to where it says face transfer right here. You can click on that, or you can find it just in your tabs here below the parameters. So if I slide down, I'll find face transfer, or I should in these tabs. All right, so here it is. So I've taken a picture of Milica that I rendered because I wanted to try and get a more lifelike thing. So like if you go on the internet and you're trying to find, you know, a picture, you want to try and get a picture of whoever you're trying to duplicate face forward, hair kind of out of the way. And you're going to see here that that's kind of impossible. Um, you know, you, you search someone like, I don't know, search Jill Valentine, you know, the video game character, and you're never going to get the perfect portrait. So I just chose a picture of Milica, just a random picture that kind of shows the front of her face and uh, kind of a distance. You might want to get a little bit closer if you can, but hey, this is reality, right? So we've got this picture and what we're going to do is we're going to use this picture to try and transfer her face onto the Genesis 8 base figure. So in order to do that, it's kind of already up, but all you have to do is go to source image under your face transfer, click on that and go to browse. And we're going to see that I have some other things that we're going to play with, but I'm going to select this Milica and we're going to get that portrait right here under the source image. All right, then we choose if this is, uh, it says base auto 
Um, I just leave that alone. It says Genesis 9 or Genesis 8. I can choose Genesis 8. This is the one I purchased. Daz Studio just comes with face transfer. You just have to have the serial number to get it activated. So it's already on your Daz Studio 4.22. So we can run some tests on Genesis 9, but it'll put a watermark on her forehead. And I think you get like three of them for free before it tells you you have to buy them so you can for the first three you can remove that watermark after you're done but we are just using genesis 8 so i'm going to keep this at auto or i could select genesis 8 it doesn't matter the gender is obviously female and we're going to generate so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make sure i have my genesis 8 base figure selected and we're just going to hit generate now this is gonna take a few minutes to kinda of compulate, and then we're gonna get this image. So what it's done is it's analyzed our picture and it's put that morph onto our character. Now it also attempted to adapt her textures. All right, now see, you can see there's some hair in here and stuff. Don't worry about that, because what you're gonna to need to do is go in to one of your characters that you have and add the mats to your character. But let's just look really quick at the morphs. You know, it's not that bad. It's not perfect. It does look like Milica. So to help this out, obviously I can select my character. And just to show you, let's, let's do a quick comparison. I'm going to go to my content library. I'm actually going to go down to Milica and let's add her textures just to see how the morph looks. So when you do this, you're going to want to try and, and find a character that you already have where their textures, their mats are going to match your, your person as closely as possible. So, you know, if they're light skinned, you'll try and find a character with light skin. If they're dark skinned, you'll try and find a, a character with dark skin. Okay, so here's Melika's skin. Let's just add that to our character. And then we can do things like add her makeup. Let's add the same makeup. See, I think I put this one, do the same thing with our real Melika girl. And I have kind of red lips. Let's put some red lips on our new girl. And then let's get this hair on her. So this hair is the City Braids hair. I've noticed that, you know, if you leave hair out, it just doesn't look like your character very much. All right, now this is definitely not the same as Milica. So I agree, you know, people will be like, that doesn't even look anything like her. I actually think it does look like her. We just have some issues. There are some things that don't match. So what I suggest you do is use face transfer if you want to spend, you know, the money to get face transfer. And then you're going to have to go into your character and you're going to have to start manipulating your character. So right away, I'm going to go back to texture view, but right away I can see that there is a resemblance to Milica. But one of the big differences, you know, with with uh, people, one of the big things that characterizes a person are their eyes. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the new character's eyes. So I'm gonna select the character under parameters. I'm just gonna go to actor, and then I'm just gonna type in a search for eyes. Now we've done this before in some other tutorials where I was making some characters, but if I do this, I can go into things like eye size. Now look, Milica has bigger eyes, so we can take this eye size and we can make them bigger. We can also take the eye width and we can change her eye width and just match it up better. We can also go to mouth and under mouth, we can change the mouth a little bit. So. We're gonna shrink that mouth width a little bit. The mouth height also. But you can see I can get this character to look similar. We're not gonna get a exact copy. I think people have really unrealistic expectations 
when they're like, well, you know, if I want to put in a, a person, it should look exactly like them. You're just not going to get that, okay? But if we play around with the settings after the face transfer, you know, we can get a resemblance. Maybe this looks like uh, Milica's sister. They look very similar. They're not exactly the same, okay? So you're just going to have to deal in reality with that. And um, I've seen some other tutorials on the face transfer. They're about five minutes long. They're very short and sweet, and they show you exactly how to do it. But then I read the comments, and people are all griping about how terrible it is. Think about, you know, reality here. We're not going to get a perfect match, but we can play around and we can do something that looks very similar. I'm thinking if you are wanting to, uh, you know, copy a celebrity or something like that, you want their likeness. You don't want it to be exactly like them. You want it to look sort of like them if you have a character in mind, but you don't want the exact match. Okay, so we're going to do this same thing with a different character now. And I'm going to take an actual real-life person, and we're going to add this person to a Genesis 8 base figure. And we're going to see what we can come up with. Okay, so I now again have the Genesis 8 base character. And what we're going to do is we are going to try and create... A person from a real picture so I am gonna go down to the face transfer and I am gonna select a picture that I just took off the internet here she is this is a real well celebrity I'm not trying to um, steal anyone's image but I just want to show you how this works I tried a couple different pictures of this person but I think this one is gonna be the best so I kind of played around with it. So we're going to put that one in. And then to kind of help us out, I'm going to take this base figure and I want to pose her just a little bit. So I'm going to uh, turn her head and just kind of get her in that same position as the picture of our celebrity. So, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but let's get it kind of into the same pose. And then I have found some hair. So I'm going to go ahead and put her hair on. I also have some eyebrows because our celebrity has some pretty thick eyebrows. Honestly, when you look at her, she's got some eyebrows. She always wears this makeup. So we're going to try and make a likeness of this person. Okay. So the first step is once we have the picture loaded in, I have auto selected under base she's a female. I'm going to select my entire character and we're going to generate this image. Now it takes a little bit of time, but we have this finished. You know, right off the bat, that does not look bad at all. That looks actually pretty good. I'm, I'm impressed with how that looks. What we can do is we can kind of compare the two. So let's compare the, the real picture with what we just created. Okay, so here is our person. Here is the face transfer. Pretty close. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and because it tried to match her textures, we're going to go in and choose a texture from a different character here. So I have one that I kind of looked through and chose one that I thought matched the way that I like. So I'm going to select my figure and we're going to just add in this material map from this character called Jolin. So I'm going to add in Jolin's. For some reason, Jolin doesn't like her eyes. I don't know what the deal is, but it still works just fine. So we're going to add in Jolin's texture and then we're going to add her brown eyes because our character has brown eyes. All right, and then uh, let's add some makeup here. This person likes a lot of eye makeup, so we're gonna add the eye makeup. Okay, and then let's bring up our picture again. So the big difference, kind of like with Milica actually, 
is I think our character doesn't have the right size eye. Her eyes need to be bigger. And if we look at the distance from the bottom of our person's nose to her lips, there's a little discrepancy there. So we can fix this. All right, let's click on our character. Let's go to the parameters, go to actor. Let's first do the eyes. So I just searched for eyes. I'm gonna scroll down until I find eye size and I'm gonna make her eyes bigger. She needs bigger eyes. All right, that's the first thing. Then I'm gonna go to nose and I'm gonna change, not the size of her nose, cause I think the size of her nose is pretty good, but the height of her nose. So we're gonna look for nose height. Let's just lower that a little bit. All right, now we're gonna open up our character. That's closer, that's a lot closer. So see, with a little bit of manipulation, you can get your character to match your portrait better. You're looking for a likeness, right? All right, let's uh, do an eye ray preview of this and just see what she looks like. Pop this back up. We could manipulate this a little bit more. Uh, we could change, you know, maybe her cheeks, maybe make her nose a little wider. I don't know. I think this is a really good likeness. I don't know, so tell me what you think. Is face transfer worth it? It might be if you are trying to use some characters that already exist. You're trying to use maybe some AI images of people that you think you want you know, to make a likeness of, real life people. I think this works pretty good with some manipulation. So you're gonna have to use the parameters tab and you're gonna have to find uh, those little tweaks that make the person look a little bit better. You know, one of the things that I mentioned is this character has thicker eyebrows. And so I actually went in and, and got some eyebrow props that I added in. Now I also need to get rid of the eyebrows that are painted on. We have some painted on eyebrows on the texture of this character. So we can go in and uh, get rid of those painted on eyebrows. Okay, so I changed this a little bit. I adjusted her eyes, played around a little bit with her nose. I uh, got rid of her eyebrows and added eyebrow props because this person's eyebrows are a little bit thicker. So I added some thicker eyebrows, gave her some hair that kind of matches. What do you think? Do you think that face transfer is worth it? You know, again, it's something you have to pay for. I've heard a lot of negative things about it, but I kind of like it. I wish I would have had it actually when some clients of mine wanted specific characters. I could have done this and saved myself a lot of headaches if I would have just added in a picture using face transfer and then gone in and started to manipulate and morph that character so that it looks more and more like the person that you want. So let me know what you think. Really interested in your opinion on this one. Again, you know, I buy these add-ons and stuff so you don't have to. It's kind of a review, but more of just a critique. I think it's better than what some of the comments I've read about portray it as, but I'd like to hear what you have to think. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and give me those comments. Let me know what you think about face transfer. All right, until next time, have a great day. Milika says hi. She'll be back for our next video. All right, thanks a lot. Take care.